said, um, can you stand up a shelter at NRG for 10,000 people? And I said, yes, we can. How long do I have? He said, how long do you need? I said, well, 24 hours. So we went to work as if lives depended upon it. We felt they did. And we set up the reception area and we did that as if people were checking into a hotel. We insisted that everyone on site refer to the people coming our way as guests or neighbors. And we set up uh, the reception area as a welcoming place, a place where when you arrived, you felt uh, not only like you had shelter, but like you had made a friend. And, you know, frankly, we used decades of experience in welcoming people from all over the world to our centers in Houston. Uh, we used uh, our basic and foundational values of respect and our obsession with preserving the dignity of human beings we seek to help no matter what situation we're in. So we put all of that to work and then we set up the area for the volunteers and then we set up an area for food service and a place for children because the uh, number one thing you must do if you're going to stabilize a shelter is provide a place for children. Parents can't focus on the tasks of organizing a transition plan if their children aren't cared for and their kids can't uh, learn and play. Uh, about two o'clock then I got a call from Judge Emmett and he said, how's it coming? I said, it's going along pretty well. We feel pretty good about it. Uh, we're waiting on cots. We don't have enough FEMA cots, uh, but we think we have a donor, so we're going to work it out. And he said, well, uh, how about how about opening today? And uh, I said, as in this day, the one we're in? And he said, yeah, we've got buses coming, and, and there's no we have no place for the people in them. And we have six more hours. And he said, yeah, I'll announce it at nine then. Uh, basically said to the team that was already here, find the three people that just like you, that you can trust to do whatever it takes. Um, get them here. We've got this much time and we have to make it work. And so we did. And. Um, and it gave me some measure of delight to email him 30 minutes before nine o'clock and an hour and a half before the first guests were due to arrive and say, we're ready, send us the people. We did all of that on a handshake because I trust Ed Emmett. Um, I know him as a person and I know he wouldn't hang me out to dry and he wouldn't ask me to do that if we didn't really need to. And the second thing, uh, because it, the speed of trust is actually incredibly important in this uh, scenario. The second thing was, we're a strength-based organization. Every one of us understands what we're, where we're great, when we're great, how we're great, and we know that about one another. So when we went into this scene, when we went into this situation, we went into it fully aware that we were gonna each do exactly what we did best and we'd take turns leading depending on what we had to accomplish at that moment. And it was a moment by mon moment unfolding scenario. And the reason we had to do this is that the scale of disasters we're having now really doesn't allow for those rescue operations that we used to be able to rely on to reach us in time. We can't wait for federal responses and we can't wait for national organizations because they have to bring, bring in people from outside of the scene and often they can't. Uh, we've learned so much from this experience about what we're capable of when it's really necessary and about what we're willing to do for our neighbors.